This tutorial will show you how to set up dialogue system interactions. You can always start conversations in c -sharp code or any of the supported visual scripting systems or using dialogue system triggers. In this tutorial, we'll cover trigger-based interactions like this and interactions using a proximity selector component like this. The dialogue system works great in 2D, 3D, VR, and AR, but since this tutorial is in 2D, we'll need to enable the dialogue system's 2D support. In the dialogue system's welcome window, tick 2D Physics. Next, we'll download the tutorial assets from the dialogue system extras page linked in the description. Go to the extras page, download the tutorial assets package, and import it. We'll start with the base tutorial scene, which is a simple scene that you can run around in. The first thing we need to do is assign a dialog database to the dialog manager. We can just assign the demo database. Let's set up a bark interaction on the crate. Inspect the crate and set up a trigger collider. Make the trigger a little bigger so the player can trigger the interaction when she's near it instead of right on top of it. Next, add a dialog system trigger and set it to on trigger enter. Since we only want the player to trigger this interaction, click the add player tag button. In the actions section, click add action bark. Set the bark source to text and enter some text to bark. Now we need to give this crate a bark UI. Locate the bubble template standard bark UI prefab and add it to the crate as a child. We'll change the order layer so that it renders on top of our 2D sprites. Then let's save this customized version as a prefab variant. That way we won't lose our customizations if we import an update of the dialog system. Finally, add a dialog actor component and assign the Bark UI prefab to it. We'll set the Y offset to zero so that it's not too high above the crate. And let's give this a shot. Now let's set up a proximity selector interaction with the villager. The villager already has a regular collider. Add a usable component. This is what the proximity selector will use to determine that the villager is usable. On the player, add a trigger collider. We'll also make this a little wider so that the player can detect things a little bit ahead of her. Then add a proximity selector. Whenever you add a selector or proximity selector, the dialog system will ask if you want to add the component that lets it use Unity UI displays. Click Add. This will add a component that tells the proximity selector to use the scene's standard UI selector elements. 
If we inspect the Dialog Manager game object, it has an instantiate prefabs component that instantiates just such a prefab. The one that it'll instantiate for now is called Basic Standard UI Selector Elements. You can duplicate this and customize it to look however you want. Now our Proximity Selector component will use that UI. On the Proximity Selector, you can see that interactions can be triggered with the Spacebar or Fire 2 input, which is mapped to the right mouse button. Returning to the Villager NPC, add a Dialog System Trigger component. Leave the trigger set to On Use. Select Add Action Bark. Then add a Dialog Actor component and assign your Bark UI prefab. Let's give that a try. Now that we know that the interaction is working, let's see if we can make it start a conversation. Remove the bark action and select Start Conversation. To test, we'll just select any conversation for now. Now this works, but you might notice that the player can still move around during the conversation. To prevent that from happening, inspect the player and add a Dialog System Events component. In the Conversation Events section, we'll add elements to On Conversation Start and On Conversation End and we'll configure these to disable and then re-enable the player controller. So now if we play the scene, you should see that during the conversation, the player controller has been disabled so the player can't move. When the conversation ends, the player can move again. In the online manual, the Script Messages and Events page explains which game objects will receive these messages and also how you can set up your own C-sharp scripts to handle them if you don't want to use a Dialog System Events component. Finally, you may want the Selection UI to appear on the object that's being selected instead of showing up in the same place in screen space. To do this, drag one of the standard usable UI prefabs onto the usable object. We'll drag the basic standard usable UI prefab onto the villager. You can of course customize how this looks. And now if we play and approach the villager, you'll see that it shows the on character usable UI instead of the screen space one for this character. That's it for the interaction tutorial. The next series of tutorials cover cutscene sequences, which will allow you to do additional things during conversations, such as playing voiceover, animation, fading in and out, moving game objects, and more. Thanks for watching.